Melinda's. Hello, Welcome. Melinda's. Hello, my darling. It's VCR Party. Welcome to the show. My name is Joe. This is Nick. We do the Found Footage Festival, but we also do VCR Party, which is the show where we watch all of our VHS tapes. we got to count these someday. And uh, we play them for you uh, as we're watching them. And boy, we got a jam-packed episode for you today. A special guest is joining us. got a special us. guest, Mark Borchardt. Uh, director of Coven, he was also in the movie American Movie, yeah. and uh, Very we're, excited we're about big that. fans of his. So um, he's joining us later. He's joining us later, and we got so much. We got more jingles. The jingle yeah. obsession is still going Some strong right on now. That. Yeah, but let's dive right in with Found Footage Festival Classics. Uh, this is where we show you something from one of our DVDs or digital downloads. Uh, this one comes from Volume Seven, I think. Uncle Moy. No. Uh, Seven. Seven, I think, yeah. Seven. It's uh, from a montage we cut called Songs That'll Be Stuck in Your Head Forever. Songs That'll Get Stuck in Your Head Forever. Mm -hmm. Catchy tunes. And I think the, uh, the... And also, this one celebrates Hanukkah, um, which I know very little about, to be honest. Yep. <laughs> but I know it is it Hanukkah. It might not even be... Yeah. It is. I looked it, it up. We're, okay. we're in the midst of Hanukkah. And actually, we're pre-taping right now, so we're not actually in Hanukkah right now while we're pre-taping this, but it doesn't matter. You don't care. This is a, a, a guy, a bearded man named Uncle Moishi, mm -hmm. and uh, he's got a group called the, the Mitzvah Men, and mm -hmm. he does songs about... Well, being Jewish. So uh, here's a song. He's got a lot. I think he's like I think he's like the Hasidic Jew, Mister Rogers. Is he Hasidic? Yeah. He's Orthodox, but I don't know if he's. Well, a, I don't know. Is he? I don't know if he's. I Hasidic. don't know the difference. I, yeah. Honestly, I don't know the difference. I think he's just Orthodox. But anyway, you can get this. He's got the hat and he's got the curls. Yeah, but that's that's just Orthodox. That's not necessarily Hasidic. But anyway, here okay. we go. This is uh, Uncle Moishi, and uh, a bunch of Gentiles talking about Jewish faith. Here. So here we go. <laughs> Oh, turn this up. Oh, wait, we're winding. Can you hear it. that? Could you hear that or no? It's way too low. It's way too low. All right. Hold on, we didn't test this. Let's crank Uncle Moishi. <laughs> it's Dr. Demento. <laughs> and he's always shocked. I think that's the symbol for kosher on his hat. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. But Orange soda. soda. Yep. <laughs> Pretzels. <laughs> Special chicken kebab. Uh -huh. Yeah, Uncle Moishi. So, yeah. yeah, that's just a little bit. There's a lot more Uncle Moishi, but... Uh, <sighs> I love him. That oh, song. Oh, he's so good. He has he has one song where, and I went looking for his tape today, and I couldn't find it. But he has one where he's uh, riding around on a jet ski. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any more questions about Judaism, please Just ask email us. us or we're the guys. Put it in the comments. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, there actually is a mezuzah as you come into our apartment building. So yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we know a little bit about office the building. Faith. We don't live here. Actually, or, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, office yeah. building. Um, Should I uh, apologize? You want to apologize now? Yeah, I probably should. Okay. Uh, last week, I made a grievous error. You um, do the best apologies. I'm going to go ahead and say, we got to come up with a graphic that says Nick's, Nick's Apology Corner. Yeah, I mean, it'll definitely be a corner. But what happened last week is we played the full version of a local commercial for Kemper Burgers. Uh -huh. um, and, well, I'll just read the apology. <clears throat> but no, but you... I'm, I explained it in the apology. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Last week on VCR Party, I played the full version of a local commercial called Kemper Burgers, where the employee raps about burgers. In volume eight of our show, I trimmed this spot for time and edited out a lot of the herky-jerky repetition of lyrics. In retrospect, I've learned that herky-jerky repetition of lyrics is what rap is all about. And I'm sorry. Let me close with this. I am the, I am the, I am the apology king, and I'm here to say, 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 I love to apologize night and day, night and day, day, day. All right, wow. so I hope that it again. goes a wow. small way towards uh, making up for that error. And, and I hope that people remember that Kemperberger commercial because then the jokes that you wrote in there will make more sense. Go watch episode 33. It's about an hour long. 
Uh, all right. So what were you gonna do? Uh, oh, oh well, I was gonna say. So we do this Patreon thing, right? Where we give out Patreon bonuses. We try to give out as many bonuses as we can. I always forget the address. If you want to donate to, oh yeah, there oh, you it mean is. That? Oh yeah, right, okay. You were right being there. cute. Yeah. Okay, there it is. Um, so I was thinking this week we put up the because, and I and I say this only because two people requested. Two oh. people requested yeah. um, the meat skinning music. Right. You remember the music yeah, for from the, the meat cradle skinner? meat skinning device? Yeah. That you found so, the... Yeah, yeah. So we, we claimed that we were uh, meat skinners, <laughs> and there's this meat skinning device from I think Holland, yeah, or somewhere, yeah. or Belgium, or I, um, and uh, so I called them up and said, "Hey, I'm a meat skinner. I need I need this device." They sent this meat skinning video, but it had the best soundtrack on it. Let's remind and, people uh, what that was. I'm just gonna give you like 15 seconds of. Uh, the meat skinner. Oh, gr oh cradle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there it is. So, so you can hear the full tune. If you are a Patreon subscriber, we're going to upload that, and you can download it, and you can put it in your Walkman. You can listen oh, okay. to it everywhere you go. Put it in your Walkman. Yeah. Make it a ringtone. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a great reward. Uh, so thank you for your continued patronage and, and join you're not, us. You're not going to hear that song anywhere else. <laughs> it's a fun club. No. Just quickly wanted to mention um, that we've got some tour dates coming up. Uh, on December 14th and 15th, we've got two shows back-to-back -back in Tucson at one of our favorite theaters, the Loft Cinema. Mm -hmm. And um, we're doing the, we're kind of doing a greatest hits the first night, and then the next night we're coming back and doing uh, the dirty stuff, After Dark, that mm -hmm. show. And uh, you can actually get discount. It's 20 bucks to come both nights. So if people are really gluttons for punishment in Arizona... Spend a whole weekend watching dumb weekend, found footage videos. 10 o'clock Friday, 10 o'clock Saturday. Those are our people. Yeah. yeah Tucson's so, always a good city for It us. is. Steve, uh, you did such a great job with, the, uh, with your commentary corner. Do you have more for us today? So or Steve, what do you our want? director, has been going through comments from the previous week's episode, and we're responding to them with snarky remarks, right? Is that the idea? I, I, I feel like last week, though, your uh, microphone wasn't working very well. Was that... How are we doing this working, week? Is your microphone working this week? It sounds like it is. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Right. What, what are some of your favorite comments from last week's episode? Are you, are you appreciative that we allowed you to come back even though you had that um, microphone... Well, I mean, Joe, you're just such a humanitarian. I do. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I felt like I should have given Nick something for Apology Corner from me. Oh, yeah. And that he could have also checked off. It's not too box. late. No. Sounds like Steve needs an apology to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But go on. We had some comments. Oh, uh, yeah. There was a lot of uh, fun comments. Um, some people were very... Uh, are you not showing your face now on the thing? Or are you going to... It was a bit much last time. So... Uh, <laughs> Wait, are you being, self, you know, being self-conscious? We're, we're all working. No, no. Uh, yeah. It's just a lot going on. And right now I have to have the computer in my lap. Oh, it's oh, bigger right. thing. Too much. I was trying to do that. The audio Finagling. got messed up. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big, long story that I'm sure everyone's dying to hear. Let's hear some comments. Um, Lucia, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I apologize. Uh, very upset because she is in Canada and has a couple of envelopes in the hopper. Does not want to get disqualified. You guys threatened to disqualify. Oh no 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 no! I got no. one word for it. Sorry, uh, <laughs> no, not no, no. getting anything from us. No no no! We will take Canadians out of here. It's just a pain in the ass because we have to go down to the. We actually have to go to the post office for those. We can't use stamps.com or whatever. We and use. we don't like exercising. No. We don't like to have to like move from this. We room. will, but hopefully it's. We will definitely small. do it. We have not taken out any Canadian names. We would not do that. So okay. You know. Sorry, hey. Uh, Karen Hanson, maybe this should have been part of Nick's Apology Corner. He couldn't come up with silent majority. I was really searching for that word. I think I said the non-vocal majority, <laughs> which I think is a more eloquent, more elegant way of putting that. It's a very so, Mark Borchardt way of putting I, it. I, I stand think. by my phraseology. Yeah. Did um, you want? You don't want to apologize for that one? No, you're no sir, by it? Karen. Okay. Um, well, speaking on that same thing, Stephanie uh, Kadera had an idea. Maybe Nick's shame corner. Mm. That'd be great. I'm shameful for many, many things. Oh, so, you have yeah. so much to be ashamed about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a great idea, actually. Okay, sure. I, we got a bunch more corners. It kind of goes hand in hand with your apology corner. The shame and the apologizing. And yeah. The, yeah, well, we could alternate weeks. Yeah. A week, B week kind of thing. What, what was the shame in reference to? Was it the story about him being naked in the... Well, I slipped in the down? shower and I'm only 42. So, you know, I think that... <laughs> 
There is a small amount of shame in and that. And you were completely naked when that happened, and right? And my phone was getting waterlogged. Yeah. yeah. So. I bet when you fell down, I bet you were more concerned about your phone getting oh, wet. 100%. Rather than your First well-being. First thing I did was <laughs> took it out of the water and threw it out. It was like, please don't have to make me put this in rice. Please. <laughs> it only works half the time. Luckily, it's fine. So Okay. Yeah. Shoo. Yep. You're not. I mean, you have bruises all yeah, over your still body. Bruised but, yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. What else you got? Uh, Elizabeth built off built off of that, and said, uh, Joe's memorial corner was narrowly averted. Oh, oh yeah. Because yeah. if I would have died, then I would have had a memorial corner where I would memorialize people like Nick after like he died. That. Yeah. And uh, we actually did have somebody who died the week before, so we could have had two weeks in a row of memorial corner. Yeah. So yeah. And people are just going to constantly be dying. So that's true. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. I'll consider that corner. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that was a big, uh, you know, a big topic of conversation was Nick's fall. Somebody said that could have been uh, if we had the video of it, that could have been not blurred and one of the Patreon. Oh yeah. yeah! Next time I tell you what, I'll I'll just record myself every time I step in the shower, just in case I fall again. So, who knows, so, patrons? You might luck out. There's something really funny about you being in pain, wet. Yep. With your dong hanging out. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> and like gripping a shower curtain and kind of half out. You know, it wasn't graceful. It wasn't just a slipping on a banana peel. It was a full on, awkward. Yeah. Was there some sort of like oh? Was there something like that? No, it just took me a while to realize what had happened. All of a sudden I realized, oh, I'm on the floor of the shower right now, yeah. and my body's half out. Was the, was the uh, podcast still playing while all that was happening? I hadn't even gotten that far. Oh, you didn't even get no, that far. I was okay. ready to put it on, and, and I think my distractedness in, in trying to find the right podcast, yeah. it made me slip and fall. So. Yeah. Yep. Steve, uh, did you pick a winner for the uh, Balloon Fest t-shirt? Because we were giving away a Balloon Fest the t-shirt to the best last comment. Week. I did, and I'm going to come on camera for this, Joe, just to appease you. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> See, look. I am. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to look towards you guys, so we'll just get the side of my oh, head, which yeah, is very... Right. Um, it was actually Elizabeth Montanay, and this is my favorite comment. Maybe Otis's arrogance is justified by his talent. Good, yeah, good. that's good. Ex- an excellent, worthy winner right Context there. Context for that. Oh, and by the way, Elizabeth, please... Uh, Email us at info at foundfootagefest.com so we can get your address. Yes. But the, the context of that was, so, oh boy, I'm going to have to draw a diagram for this one. Um, so we called up a salesperson who knew the jingle writer who we want to hire as our jingle writer. And I asked her, how is it to work with this guy? This guy's name is Otis. <laughs> and she said, he's very arrogant. Right. Uh, he's not very easy to work with. And then what was... She was very Elizabeth's... candid about that. I think part of it was she didn't know she was being recorded. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she was very <laughs> yeah, I think that's pretty illegal, right? Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I don't think, think so. you're allowed yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, but what um, what did she say? What did Elizabeth say? Maybe Otis's arrogance is justified by his talent. Well, when you see his jingles. So I found a new oh. jingle by Otis. New Otis jingle. I, I don't have it queued up next, but coming up later in the show, I'm going to show you uh, an Otis jingle. Okay. Um, and Elizabeth is 100% right. He is the best jingle writer. This guy, Otis. I agree. He is the best jingle writer. This one that you're about to see is for a hospital. It is just, it paints a picture. It tells a story. It You tap your toes to it. Uh he just he, he knocks it out of the park. So, all right. Yes. Well, we'll see if I tap my toes to it. Um, so that's all you got, Steve. All right. Um, let's see. Oh no! Remember you you brought up this up last week was the um, uh, North Dakota jingle for Smokies. Oh well, yeah. People were we asked people to leave us their favorite local jingles. We got some a lot of entries. Yeah. We're still going through them, but one caught your eye. Tell yeah. us about that one. Uh, it was a great one from North Dakota. Smokies. It's a uh, a steakhouse, I believe, yeah. up there. Well, and you so told you, me about it. I looked it up. I included it. And I haven't seen this yet. So yeah, I'm you haven't seen it. I'm excited yeah. to watch Oh, you're in for a treat. Oh, you okay. are in for a treat. Uh, Fargo, North Dakota, Smokies. This is their local commercial. All right. I, I think it's airing now, right? I think it's still airing right now. Next time we're in Fargo, we got to go to Smokies. Okay. Let's see if this. Doc, I have this problem. What is this problem? I'm too indecisive. For example. When I go to Smokies of West Fargo, I can't decide whether I want their great steaks, prime rib, barbecue ribs, or seafood. You know, they were voted years running to have the best in the FM area and all these items. Where are you going? Smokies! Well, what about me? Who cares? Smokies! Brings back the good old days. Yes! Oh, wow. Also deserves to be arrogant. Let me, let me, let me rewind. 
They actually used Smokey the Bear there. Smokey. An actual Smokey the Bear? Yeah, but a little bit off. Yeah. Still got a smirk, but yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, she was really, well, I don't understand why she was so mad at him. Why? Because I guess she couldn't understand him because I couldn't. I couldn't understand a goddamn <laughs> word he was saying. I don't know what accent that was. But it's, it, was it actually sounded like the movie Fargo, the Coen was, Brothers movie. It was somehow Fargo. more pronounced yeah. than that. It was, yeah, that was insane. Wow. Oh, well, so thanks good. for bringing that to our attention. More jingles to come. Keep more, yeah, keep them coming. Um, what else do we have? Um, we don't have any updates on Dr. Tammy Bailey dentistry yet. Um, oh, but... So, like we were mentioning, Otis, this guy, yes. who's the jingle writer, maybe slightly arrogant, for good reason. You're gonna see. You're gonna see. For good reason, he should be arrogant. I okay. found another one of his jingles online, and um, it's for a hospital. And this is the one that I'm telling you. It paints a picture. It tells a story. You, you tap, tap your, your toe to it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. It's got it all. Okay. It's got everything you want in a jingle. Keep and, my eye uh, on your toes. You travel through life. You travel through life. You're going good oh, CGI. Hell. You're going through hell? You need comfort and clarity. That's how you measure well. This is your life. You live it well. Kentucky and a medical center. This is your life. Wow. I wonder if that's Otis's Powerful. voice, too. It could be, because he's the one who sings it and records, right? Or he's, yeah. he's the musician who writes it and records it. So. Yeah. Do you think that this is a good, that's a good shingle, though? I'm just wondering, like, would you get that song stuck in your I head? I don't think so. I mean, this, there's, there's no, no repetition, and it's not short enough. But You, you know what the, the, mo the one that I get in my head all the time is? Oh, 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 O'Reilly's Auto, Auto Parts. Auto Parts, yeah. yeah. And there was one in... They need, they need that kind of repetition. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. The one that I always get in my head is was, I guess we would watch this in college, and we we have it on a VHS tape somewhere. We should pull it. But it was Auto Glass Specialists. Oh, yeah. So it would go... Well, wait, 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 I, I, I was going to bring that up, actually, with oh. this guy. Well, okay, go ahead. Go ahead and tell the story. Well, yeah, the, yeah. the jingle goes, Auto Glass Specialists were the guys in the little red trucks. Because that was their yeah. symbol. And I think one time we were watching it, like 2 in the morning, in our dorm room, and somebody said, Auto Glass Specialists were the guys with the little red dicks. And for some reason, I was just like, I wish that was their jingle. That would have stuck out even more. Oh, the guys with the little red dicks. It didn't make any sense. No, but it really well, kind of did. I, I suppose, I, you know. They just they had, had little red dicks. Yeah, it reminded yeah. me a lot of my dog. <laughs> Have you shown your dog's dick on the show? I yet? haven't, no, no, but maybe that'll be a special Christmas episode okay. or something. So, um, yeah, special Christmas, yeah. Just for Patreon backers. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun footage well, after dark. You just see my dog's exposed penis. But explain that, like, his dick does always hang out. Yeah, I have think I may have mentioned before? that, but yeah, he uh, has some sort of dan he, he just is a, well, has a lot of problems, but his penis is out more than it's in, and it's not because he has an erection, it's just some sort of, it just, it just falls kind of out. Flaps out. And yep. you have to lubricate it every day Manually and put it back put in. put it back in once or Mo twice a day. Once a day. And you always have lube on you at all and times in order to, yeah. Nick's shame corner is really, it's really shaping up. I'm stockpiling up. a lot of shame, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's, okay. This corner just builds itself, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, so this guy named Andrew emailed us with a voice memo because he, he, he told us that Raleigh, North Carolina has a lot of great jingles. And he, I don't know if he, he couldn't find them. He said he didn't them. record them. He, he said, didn't record them. Should I yeah. just sing them to you? And yeah. we said yes. So he sent us. So he sent us that, and I put it on here on, onto a VHS tape, so you're only going to hear the audio. And... Uh, so how's his voice? It, it's not very good. Okay. No, it's not good at all. Um, <laughs> but he sang us some of his favorite jingles. Okay. So I like let's, the spirit. Um, I like yeah, the... we'll, we'll see how this goes. Okay. This uh, first one he said was for the glass doctor, which I wanted to bring up auto glass specialists. Oh yeah, uh, with, you're right. Yeah, but it, it worked out. Okay. okay so uh, this is for the glass doctor in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is Andrew's jingle of it. We're not watching anything, right? We're not watching anything. Okay. No. Call the glass doctor, he'll fix your pain. Call the glass doctor, he'll fix your pain. And it was just that over and over again. And then like a guy would come on and be like, the glass doctor will do your glass work for blah, blah, blah. Call the glass doctor, he'll fix your pain. Yeah, I could see that, right? I can visualize that I one. would have added, he's the guy with the little red dick. Right, but, right. You know. Next one is for Dickinson Ford, a local dealership. Okay. 
Uh, should be started. You'll save a ton at Dickinson. You'll save a ton at Dickinson. Falsetto. I yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said that would usually happen. Like you'd see the owner of the place parachuting down or something. Next one's for a bowling alley called Western Lanes. Bowling alley sunk to the tune. Bowling, bowling, bowling. Yeah. Western Lanes has bowling. Keep those balls a rolling. Collide. And then you'd hear this like giant crash with all the pins go flying. And then it was like. Some guy would come on and be like, head him up, move him out to Western Lanes <laughs> or something like that. Anyway, uh, those are my jingle memories. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Love the show. All right. I love this. I think people need to start singing Jing the jingles. We'll, we'll call them jingle memories. Jingle memories, yeah. <laughs> Spend I, on your jingle memories. I think it's appropriate for the holidays, too. Jingle memories. It sounds Christmassy. It sounds the holiday festive. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah. So, yeah, if you, I mean, like, uh, we don't really care for YouTube all that much. So let's just, instead of, like, finding the I mean, I love YouTube. But our show's not about finding YouTube clips. No, exactly. So yeah. I, I kind of like this better. I like, and if you can include some, a video version of it, like, I mean, not not of the actual commercial, but like, you know, find a find a some clip art of a piece of glass for the glass jingle. Yeah, or request that we, f or, or send us a clip art. We'll put it into the video. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. But so we have something to watch. But I yeah. love that idea. So send us your jingle memories. Just record a voice memo on your phone, and then uh, yeah, and, don't and do just, it while you're about to take a shower. But do it on your phone, and then send it to us later when you're dry. Or do it when you're about to take a shower, but make sure you're videotaping yourself. Unlike Please. some people. Sorry about that. Um, hey, roll the graphic. It's time for Joe's Tedium Corner. Oh boy, here we go. Let's see it. How much time we got <laughs> here? And you can never really hear us underneath this, right? So. No, just kind of hear it. Now you know we're all there. Yeah. You know, one time you could actually like make it go a different direction, but I don't know if that would be... I think, that, I think it would be sure the key bears off. I yeah. think it would, uh, what, I was saying one thing that we could do is blow it down a little bit more. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. For maybe there could be Break a few it months up. to do that, kind of a promotional thing, or... Yeah, okay. maybe maybe like raising raising for a good cause or something. Steve, for, uh, for a good cause. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I said this, but they one person did want to know. I think it was Lucia again. Wanted to know, have you guys? I'm not even up. Uh, wanted to know if you guys decided. Uh, is there can there be a vote whether it's Tediots or TD Bears? They they were voting for what the tediots. final. I think Joe gets final call here. I, I like TD Bears. I like saying my TD Bears out there. I don't like saying my Tediots because then that just implies that we're being stupid. That this is just a frivolous thing. No, this is a real movement here. And in fact, I am gonna do uh, te Tedium Con Borkor. Borkor is gonna be a thing. Tedium Con. I'm looking for May 2019. I want all my TD Bears to come out, and we're gonna have a big, huge weekend. We're gonna. Here's what we're going to do. I'll tell you exactly what we're going to do here. We are going to watch both of these videos. Today we're not going to watch both, but these are two that I got when I was working at the Video Duplication House. And this is the label that I gave it. I made an extra copy for myself. Yeah. It's called Boring Retreat Day 1 and Boring Retreat Day 2. Mm -hmm. Day 2 has croquet. Uh, uh, you know, croquet yeah, the, the game. game. Croquet, yeah, yeah. And, uh, so this, these are two, like, what are these, like, these are 90-minute tapes full of this boring retreat in Minnesota of these people sitting around. And I decided to go for today, for uh, Joe's Tedium Corner, I'm going to play day two of the boring retreat. It's, there's no croquet. It's this mingling, like, social hour where there's a lot of small talk. Oh, great. I decided to include small talk because we're talking with Mark Borchardt today. Who hates? He hates small talk. I feel like he. It. I feel like he plans his life around avoiding small talk. Oh yeah. So. Yep. Um, I. Th he, he would here, hate this. For he sure. would hate this place. I think you would hate this place too. I'm sure I would. <laughs> so here, let's watch some some uh, tedious small talk at the boring retreat. There. Another couple right here. Not quite sure who it is yet. Ross McLean and Angela. We have Lowell and Deborah. What did you guys do today? They did, they're just being uh, ambushed right now. How'd your cribbage go? I had actually forgotten about it. <laughs> it was that good, huh? You can't hear them real either. <laughs> I got drunk. It was fun though. Alright, good. Okay, oh and here's our Iowa. Here's our Iowanian. Can you please come in here and tell us what this is? 
Maybe. I probably don't have any idea what. Are you going to tell us what this animal is here? Okay, I doubt it. But you know, there is a little game you can kiss the moose if you want to. Well, we got to figure out which one he is first. That one over there is usually the one that they kiss. That's this one right up there. But we don't make people do that on this trip. Oh, we don't? No, we don't. Well, there's one here, too. Because it's plenty gross. It's <laughs> Do you find this tedious or do you yeah. find this okay? Okay, what else we got around here? Oh, here's some other people what? visiting. Yep. This is in the they wanted copies of this. Uh -huh. Lodge, and this is one of the so many memories. Places. And people visiting over here. Oh, watch this part. Watch this. You'll like this part. Enrique! How was the park? Pretty good? Did you get cold? Okay, here no, we go cut again. off. We want to know the answer to that. It's Cristobal. Louis Frio. Sagrario. And Mary. So there's Raj explaining Raj. the animals on the wall. There's a part you're going to like coming up here. Okay. There's Ron Belcher. It's right up your alley. Okay. Scoping out here. What would you do and if you were at this party? Turn in your face go to the here bathroom now. and check my phone. I'll get you one way or the other, Liz. Come on now. Jeez, it really doesn't hurt that much. Here. Oh, they have a this fire part. going. I didn't even realize that. Awesome. Here this There's part. Blake. Huh? <laughs> Please speak up. We can't hear you. That's like having a fire at the end of May, right? Right. So, hi, Val. <laughs> what are you drinking there? Margarita. He makes pretty good ones. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Okay. Those are Minnesotans, all right. They haven't said an this interesting is thing yet. PCE, people are having a good time. Roger just telling everybody that the adjourns are out. So people are going to have to check that out pretty I've, soon. Uh, I think they, so, yeah. But they seem pretty friendly. So we're going to go get some adjourns now, so I'm signing off. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's boring. Oh, it is something like that. <laughs> The lens cap is on? Oh, duh. I don't have the cap off the end. <laughs> duh. Hey, Val. <laughs> she had a margarita. There'll be more people getting theirs, too, so don't worry. You won't be the only one. Okay, did you get the... I got the gist of it, yeah. Was it tedious? It felt like I was at both days of that retreat, <laughs> just now. Day one and day two? Yeah, I felt like I was at day two. Uh, croquet would have been too interesting. You're right. Yeah, that was just like browsing I, no, actually, around. croquet is really boring. Oh, boring but I, I wanted, I really wanted to, you know, the the small talk. I yeah. really wanted to have the small talk uh, uh, feel of it. I would just find somewhere to crawl under. I'd find like a, a, a wooden bench or something, and just kind of hide under there until it was done. <laughs> Ugh, nightmare. Um, all right, so uh, and, and, and they were having turkey too, yeah, so it, it wasn't vegan. I'd be like, "Ooh, I, I ate something." And meanwhile, I'd be starving for both days of that <laughs> retreat. So, uh, as an antidote to all that tedium, I've got Nick's excitement corner. Roll the graphics, Steve. Do it. Yes. Okay. Very exciting. This is a clip of Ted Nugent. Uh, the Motor City Madman, who loves guns and hates keyboards. He loves guitar. So that's all I'm going to tell you. It's Ted Nugent's home, home movie. Make the world safe for electric guitar players. Who needs guitars when these kind of creeps are around? It could taint you forever. It could ruin your outlook on rock and roll. I'll do my duty, and I'll do it well. Die, you son of a... That's Nick's excitement corner. Roll the outro. There's Ted Nugent. Um, so What's yeah. That from? Uh, he released like a video that was kind of like uh, a tongue-in-cheek kind of like keeping keeping your house safe from invading synth you know synthesizers and things oh. like that. So yeah. He was trying to be funny, but he, uh, he was also showing off by blowing stuff up around his house. But it's a video that he released, or like a home movie yeah, no, that like no, was tape traded. He released it for like fans, you know. It oh, was like okay. a fan release video. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so that's Nick's excitement corner. Uh, should we get into our special guest, or we yeah. have more? Yeah. Okay. 
What do we yeah, want to say about oh, this? Boy, just like this guy was a, like he's been my hero for ever, like 20 years now. I've always loved this guy. Mark Borsharp, we know him because um, we're from Wisconsin. He's from Wisconsin. We had a friend who introduced us, told him that he was working on a documentary called The Dundee Project, which we just released last week. And um, so we got to sit down with him. He's and the actually, star of American Movie, the Sundance Award winner, if you haven't seen it, from 1999. And it's the best movie ever. And uh, it followed him as he was directing a movie, including one called Coven, which we have on VHS. Uh, and Mark came in, and what, the, Mark is always, he always kind of puts you in, an, not an, I don't want to say an uncomfortable position, but he throws you off balance a little bit. He, he's, he's like Werner Herzog. He's the Werner Herzog of Wisconsin. He's a, he's a Wisconsin philosopher. Um, I mean, those are my words. He, he doesn't describe himself that way. But well, we've, had, we've had a lot of guests on this show, and this one might be the most awkward. Uh, yeah, a, a segment. that's a weird one. Yeah, and but the day before that, we we got to, it was like Make a Wish Foundation because we got to go to watch a Packer game with him at Kettle of Fish in uh, the West Village, which is a Packer bar there, and we got to sit right up front with Mark Borchardt, watch the Packers, and it was the greatest and, day ever. And then ever. Mark came in the next day, and uh, here's our segment with Mark Borchardt of uh, the Dundee Project. Hey, we're here with Mark Borchard, director, filmmaker, the one and only writer, extraordinary, and our coworker too. I mean, we're we're coworkers. Yeah, that's right? correct, man. You guys are good guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We produced a movie with him, uh, the Dundee Project. Well, he he did the heavy lifting. We came in at the end, and uh, but yeah, proud to say that I work with you. Yeah, and yeah, I want to just say, all you guys, you guys are good guys. You've always treated me well. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you. much. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. can you tell us a little bit, because um, we've talked about the Dundee Project on our show, but uh, for they want to hear it from the horse's mouth, so tell us a little bit about the Dundee Project. Yeah, I was just, uh, you know, about 45 minutes or an hour north of Milwaukee, they had this annual UFO uh, thing, and I don't like to um, sit around with small talk and any of that stuff, so I brought the camera with to, um, is, this, is that, you know what, are you guys mic'd up? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this yeah, yeah. is oh, some yeah, bullshit prop. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering what's going on here. No, no, no. Um, we don't we don't have the budget for another wireless because okay. these things are expensive. Okay. So, <laughs> Coming uh, so, soon, so but you, for you now. you get the $25 mic. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it was just my way of being among the people but not uh, of the people because that, that small talk and that it's a soul killer and – and with the uh, camera, you get to go off on your own and film beautiful translucent sunlight through the leaves and so on and so forth. So that's how that project came about. Yeah, so I picked out a clip that I, th I think encapsulates all that. Some of the shots, some of the music. You did the soundtrack to it, too. Correct. Uh, and then uh, one of your interviews with UFO Bob. Um, so let's, let's take a look. Okay. It's uh, about 90 seconds long, and I think it... Uh, we get a little bit of everything here. Okay. And if you ever want to say anything over it, you can. Yeah, yeah, feel we'll, free. We'll be in a little window and while we're watching this. You guys are too kind. <laughs> <laughs> Swan. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> uh, our friend Andrew Swan. All yeah. of our friends. A very good guy. That was the connection to you. That's how we met you. So that's yeah. correct. Did he know you were filming there? Hell no. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great shot, though. I love that show. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know they had hills like that in that part of Wisconsin. Yeah. So, was there a positive message, though, for the meaning? Uh, this is positive. Okay. There is nothing as more positive than what I'm saying. Okay. So, are you? We should be happy with life. We should. Make no. No way in hell. We should not be positive. Look out here, and you're going to see p things coming out the of here tonight. That's a walking contradiction. That's trying to tell you how to wake up. Well, how, how can we wake up when our, our e ecology is going to hell? You know? The gas prices and that? How the hell with the gas prices? We should get a better carburetors on cars. <laughs> that, that, that's true. So there you go. <laughs> well, you guys did good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do like that because he's clearly, UFO Bob clearly has um, knowledge 
And, you know, his opinions about carburetors and ecology. And, and I'm sure he had it, drunk some beers that day, but I don't think sure. he was shit-faced drunk. I, I feel like he still had his wherewithal about him, don't you think? Or, or correct, was, correct. Okay. He, yeah, he had it together yeah. in his own way. Right. Yeah, but if, yeah, you're, like you were saying, he did, he did have this sort of dichotomy where he believed both things to be true at the same time a, a little bit, which... Yeah, that's life. It's a yeah. paradox. He was uh, a... Um, analogy to life's paradox for sure yeah uh so he's one character we meet in the movie and uh a whole bunch of other characters and like you said the scenery too is really really cool he captured some great uh what did you shoot it on dvx 100 oh, i okay. love the dvx i feel like the dvx is like our super eight now you know like in the in like 80s and 90s like that was the super eight was the old camera now i feel like the dvx now is our super eight yeah, the DVX, you're absolutely right about that. It's got a beautiful color saturation, especially on the blue spectrum and that. It's just a beautiful camera. It really it. has its unique cinematic look. It definitely does. It has like a, you know, it's four by three, and it's just like, yeah, I love it. Yeah, so. until the, the the new one came out a year later after I bought it, and it was 16 by nine. I was yeah. like, oh, man. I know. Yeah, yeah. So, we got burned on that, too. Thank um, you. But, yeah, so we're going to have that available on DVD and digital download very yep. soon. Um, so we'll have details about that later. But Yeah. Uh, now, I know you have a million projects cooking. At, not a million, but you have several projects cooking at the same correct. time. Correct. Which one are you most excited about right now? Do I you, can't talk about it. Can, you, uh, can, can we do another movie with you? <laughs> well, you know what the answer is going to be, of course. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. good. Yeah. So we just we're have not, to figure we're not, out what that project is at some right. point. Yeah. I mean, like, but we're not, like, super loaded. I mean, like, look, we dabble in VHS. That's our world. So we're not, like, super, like, loaded producers. But, like, Within we have reason. some money. Yeah, we yeah. have some money. So, like, a modest budget, you know. Rent will be paid. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And whatever other resources we can help provide, too, we'd be willing to do that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I doubt there are any. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably not. We could add yeah, it. because some essential things are covered, and yeah. you, you cannot go beyond that without stirring the pot. Right, right. Um, so in this new DVD, I'm putting together some of your Q&As that you do, like okay. after at the film okay. festivals and stuff. And um, I can never tell. I've been, I've been editing it for the last week, and I can't tell. Do you like doing the Q&As, or do you hate doing the Q&As? I don't. <laughs> First of all. I, I like so many things, I have to operate with a modicum of discretion at all times. But Q&As are worthless and suck shit. <laughs> but it's not that I don't like them, it's just that it's you're dealing with very primitive concepts that have absolutely no soulful meaning in any way, shape, or form. Right, well they do ask you the same question every single time. Yeah, everything, there, there's probably a subtextual joy to a lot of things, but it sure is ain't what you're seeing on the surface. Yeah. Yeah. I, you don't have to agree. No, I, I, but I do. But, I do, too. But, but, yeah. but, but, I, and I, but the part that I appreciate is that how you, whenever people ask you a question in the audience, that you try to connect with them, you learn their first name, you're like, how are you doing? Like, you, you shoot questions back at them. It, 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 it makes for a good Q&A, that's what I'm saying. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, because it is usually, like, just death. Like, usually, you know, if you're sitting in on a Q&A, I just want it to be over. Uh, because like you do get the most basic questions, or people saying like, "Hey, I'm an actor, and I, you know," and, and but they're they're asking for a tip, but really they're just kind of self promoting, and like it, it's I just always get secondhand embarrassment at every Q and A. Yeah. I just really dislike them. You know whose Q and As are great though, Crispin Glover's. You ever see Crispin Glover do a Q and A? I mean, I love. I haven't. No, I, I enjoy your I, I, Yeah, both of you. I uh, have, and yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's really excruciating. They go about two long. and a half hours. Yeah, and he'll talk about like what kind of batteries he was using in his camera. Yeah, I mean he goes into minutia. Um, <laughs> and I don't think he calls the Q and A until every single person has had a question. Yeah. There'll be like a dead silence for like five minutes, and then somebody will raise their hand yeah. out of obligation, and it'll keep going. Right. And See, I think he likes Q and As. Unlike you, you just want to get out of there. Who's I want to get out? Yeah, of there? you do. Yeah. No, I can you don't. See I through the sunglasses. Them. No, I, hey, baby, can you see my eyes? Okay. Um, no, I love Q and A's. Oh, right, I love Q and A's. Oh, you do? Yeah, oh, of course I, I do. Said, I, I thought you just said that you. Well, you didn't say. No, you were doing the sand. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were saying that they were that they sucked. No, 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 no. I said they sucked shit. Yeah. yeah. But that doesn't mean a negative. I'm just saying it's very. It's the primordial soup you're delving in. The questions mean nothing, dude. 
Okay. So, but no, it's highly enjoyable. I, I very thankful to be there and wouldn't wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you never like walk off angrily. No, dude, you walk off with a sense of elation of having touched the high skies of life itself. Well, I'm getting a lot of contradictions about Q and A's here yeah. too, like in a, in a very UFO dude, mob. Dude, yeah, 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 yeah. But you got to deal with it, man. Yeah. Because there's there there. I'm telling you, man. I am telling you, there are. Things that are worthwhile in life, man. That's what you got to focus on. Yeah, it's true. Agreed. Um, okay, so I want to play another clip for you. Cool. Um, so when I was living in Minneapolis, I worked as a production assistant, camera assistant, and I knew a guy there named John Springer who was a director, and he made a short film, and I went to see it, and I was surprised to see that you were in it, and it was really cool. Okay. It was a really cool one. I think you're in the. You think you're in it for like thirty seconds, and I'm going to show those thirty seconds. Okay, here. John Springer is a really cool dude. He's the exact same age as I am, the same year, the same date. Can't say everything, so we're t- we're the exact same age to the day. Really? To the yeah, day? To the day. He's Whoa. born on the same day. Correct. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. Correct. Is that how you guys made the connection to each other? Or? That no, it would it be the abstract. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a. Happy accident. I guess. They're, they're at a meeting for people who had the same birthday. And, <laughs> I uh, As I was saying, I, didn't, I realized it didn't make any sense. Um, but maybe that's why you formed a bond. I don't know. Whatever. Here's hey, you the, know what? Before you play that, can you charge this? Come here. Can you charge this, honey? Thank you. Because otherwise, are you almost out? We have a charger right here. Yeah, there's plugs around uh, yeah. around here. Oh no, there's hey, a plug right there. Thank you for allowing me to do that on your show. Yeah, but no, I'm just that's getting fine. concerned. No. Yeah, I don't want your phone to die. Um. Should we watch the clip? Yeah, you want to watch the clip? And then we can figure out the phone while that's happening? Yep. Okay. Here's a clip from, what's the movie called? Uh, Living Dead Girl. Living Dead Girl, okay. Short film. you got to watch the whole thing, too. The whole thing is really, really good. Um, and John Springer, I think he's very, a very religious man. I think he's a very Christian man. And so there's some religious undertones to it. Your mind is dead. You don't even know what I just said. This is in the middle of the movie. You. The silent movie titles, that's cool. Most likely, so. yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I could uh, see that would probably be pretty correct. Adding things up. What do you remember about that? Well, I don't get into horror or anything like that, and I do remember I wanted to make an amendment. It's not that Q and A's suck shit because they're great; they intellectually suck shit yeah. because you're dealing in intellectually for some reason the lowest common denominator. But anyway, moving on to your question, it was cold. Uh, there was a Packer game on. I know I went and got the William Burroughs book. Um, Outlaw and read it in its entirety back home. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. I like. Do you have like specific memories? Like you can remember a day. Oh like yeah. That? Uh, a, a uh, Annie Baker's the flick. I can remember that specifically. What? Uh, but yeah, yeah. There's whether it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Or traumatic. Yeah, I can remember specific books. In fact, prior while I was taking a break from writing and all of that stuff, I was reading, looking for Mister Goodbar, at the Hudson Bay area you know looking out on uh, yeah, yeah. the hudson river or whatever yeah so there's specific yeah i try to ally uh specific books with specific experiences so i feel like that's going to be good for your memory too you know like you have a, an association you remember where you were maybe what happened that day yeah because i don't think about i don't think about memory so you guys have memories i i really don't because i just think about it just recycles it as new stuff all the time so i don't have Memories like n- normal people, so I have to develop that neural tract uh, as we go on. So oh, I worked with a guy who, like, you could tell him a date in the 70s. So I was born in the 70s. January 17th, 1976 was my you birthday. You got a good memory. I, I went to school the day I was born. Uh, 
<laughs> and I would tell him that date, and he'd say, here's what I was doing. I was in a play. It was uh, this and that, and I went home, and we had spaghetti for dinner. He remembered every single thing he did in the 70s. So I would just tell him a date. You're not at that level. No. Okay. That's, that's, that's hypnotic. Yeah, I feel I like know. it could be a, a cool like party trick, but also a curse, because if something traumatic happened to 60 you... 60 Minutes did a piece on it really? one time. So about people who can do this, and they're mostly depressed, because they remember everything. They're like, oh, this is the day that you know my dad got mad at me. You know? Yeah, you're and constantly so, reliving that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Every day that they wake up, they're like, oh, I got in trouble on this day, like 16 years ago. Um, so that's Living Dead Girl. Yeah, and bless John Springer's heart. He's such a hard worker, such a good guy. Oh, yeah. I haven't talked to him in years, though. I was uh, last there, 2003, and then I think I feel like that was the last time I saw him. Try to reconnect but he makes uh, cool movies. Um, all right, next up, we're going to show you. So you're a film guy. You know your movies. I've been watching to your... To a degree. I've been watching your Q&As... Okay. You know, you know movies. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we've been obsessed with Russian fantasy movies lately. Okay. And, and specifically this one, we have no idea what the title is. We have no idea what it's about because it's not. There's no subtitles or anything. Um, Good luck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's just a bunch of uh, letters on there that I'm not. That I don't know what, what. What are those letters called? Cyrillic. Cyrillic. Yeah. Cyrillic letters, and uh, but we have another one over here that we call Anna Ben Wap that we got obsessed with. And so we found this one recently at a Goodwill in, actually in uh, Hudson, I think. Yep. In Hudson, yeah. Wisconsin, yeah. two weeks ago. <laughs> and uh, it's really weird. So wow. I thought I'd pop it in. And we have no idea what's going on here. It's just purely like visual and... I it's mean, anarchy. You, yeah. yeah, I mean you can't even like make out what their yeah. words are. Because it's not, like Spanish you can usually figure it out. I, I think it's a children's movie. <laughs> but they actually have some pretty cool shots in there. It's pretty good visuals. Yeah. I'm wondering how this got to Hudson. <laughs> That's an amazing find, boys. This stuff coming up is pretty cool. Like burlap creatures. Yeah. And I think it might be Pinocchio's story. Oh, yeah. Wait, what's going on here? Oh, okay. I think it's Pinocchio. Yeah, but I don't remember this in any Pinocchio. No, I, and I watched a lot of it, and I don't remember any of this from Pinocchio. And Pinocchio's nose would grow when he lied. Yeah. His nose is always long. Just always long? Hmm. <gasps> so that's a pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Cool puppets. Oh, he's got like a Red Cross armband. Yeah. I don't think this is Pinocchio. Yeah, it's... All right, we'll end it there. Wow. Yeah, yeah this was, uh, that was not disappointing. There's there's always something weird going on in, in that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that a feature? Um, it's a t I think it's a TV series because I was watching it today. It was 30 minutes long and then a new episode started up. So oh. I think it's a TV series. Yeah, we should do some research or maybe somebody watching I don't has... even know how you do research on it. I yeah, mean, but I guess if just somebody like... knows Cyrillic who's yeah, watching, Yeah, somebody knows Cyrillic. Here, let me put us, it up uh... here. Can you translate that? And Yeah, I would love to know more about it. Yeah, translate that and then yeah, maybe we can find out. I see the number two there. Maybe that means two episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. 2000? Okay. Oh, 1975. Okay. Yeah, right. it, looked, it looked like a 70s kind of movie. Yeah, so we don't collect many movies, but occasionally when we find like a unique one like that, then you know we have to pick that up. So um, We have one more that we want to show you, and we thought of this because we um, watched the Packer game with you. No, know you're a Packer fan. Um, and we found this movie called Reggie's Prayer, which was... Have uh, you shown this before on the show? Yeah, just okay. a little bit, uh, kind of a weird scene from it. 
Um, but this was like Reggie White, so he had cameos from a lot of the Packers from that era. And uh, there's one scene in particular where they had a pretty big get uh, with some of the people from the Packers team. So you'll probably recognize them. Um, it's a scene between Holmgren, Reggie White, Brett Favre, together at last, all sharing a scene. and uh, Doing comedy. Uh, yeah, Pat Morita's in it. And they had a, they had a budget. Uh, MC Hammer's in it. Um... But yeah, so let's uh, let's take a look. Do you want to properly place that, or are you? Nah, I got it. Hey, 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 hey! I think hey. Holmgren's actually a pretty good actor. You're Far the new of... coach. Told you. Told you. First game. Twenty minutes of kickoff. Twenty minutes. Yep. Been here seventeen years. Bert's been here three. Hmm. Well, okay. I... I guess I gotta get going. We got a game. Tried to talk with Coach Carney every year. But no, he didn't have any time. Nope. My son and I invented a football play a few years ago. Here, take a look. 1979? <sighs> yeah, Coach Carney was a busy fellow. Busy, busy, busy guy. I call it the Left Coast Special. Looks like the quarterback option. Yeah, well, that's the other name. Play can have two names, you know. <laughs> Could have redone that line probably. Well, you never know. Take care. All right, hey, good luck to you. Hey, Bert, you got a pretty good arm, don't you? I could have played. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, finish the sweeping. I got to go change the urinal mints. <laughs> that's not a bad. That's not a bad line yeah. to get out of. Yeah. I thought. I thought Homer nailed it. Yeah, I mean, this is like Golden Age Packers too. Yeah, you know? that's like, pretty good. And athletes acting like there's nothing more embarrassing than that. But uh, I thought Holmgren knocked it out of the park. You have an opinion? I'm speechless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brett Farr was playing a character named Bert, who was supposed to be, a, I can think, a little slow. I think he was supposed to be a little slow in the uptake there. That was his, his joke there. Yeah. Uh, but he couldn't even really deliver that very well. Mm. But, uh, yeah, that is a very religious movie by, <laughs> by Reggie White. Oh, uh, yeah. It take, yeah, it's very Christian very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we're going to have uh, details about... Um, the Dundee Project, how people can watch it, how people can download it and get the DVD. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, full disclosure. Yeah. I wasn't wearing my glasses, so I couldn't see shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> you kept asking me this whole time. It was like, are you talking to him? or? <laughs> yeah, so whatever you guys were watching, man, I'm sure it was oh, cool. Oh. Do you want to get your glasses? We'll rewatch everything. <laughs> Yes. That would suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, well, cool. On that note, uh, let's get out of here. Mark, thanks for coming on and doing oh, the show. Oh, dude, Even dude, though, my man. Yeah, my man. right. Let's work on another project. Dude, these words mean nothing. Just we'll do it, and then we'll have more to eat. Rent will be paid, and Love everyone it. will be happy. Love All right, it. Sign me good. up. All right. All right, so long. All right. Mark Borchardt. There you have it. That was very weird, but I loved it. I oh. thought he's he's an American treasure. He really is. He's my favorite. Yeah. He's absolutely my favorite. Dundee Project. You can you can pick it up at our uh, web store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't done this in a while, but people send us boxes of tapes, and uh, we love it. It's like Christmas morning. This and, one comes from our buddy Dave Ewald, yeah. who, who sends us maybe one box a year, it's and a it's heavy always one. very carefully curated. And we get texts from him all the time saying, hey, what do you think about this one? And then we're like, yeah, grab it. He had one that he was like, it's a $20 Brett and Michaels video, the wrestler. He's like, do you want this one? I was like, ah, $20. But maybe there's a reason it's $20. So I don't know. Maybe I don't know if he, he bought it or not. Okay, I we'll, mean, we'll see if that's in there. Um, I think we told him not to. Yeah. But so if he didn't, I'm not going to hold it against him. All right, this is a big, nice care package right. from Dave. And by the way, oh. you, you can put up our address. Oh, look at this. Oh, did he put notes on these? Yeah, he did. Here's nude yoga. He gave us this one. He said, couldn't watch over dinner too many pubes or maybe too few. Hmm. Okay. Too few, I think. Yeah. Um, here's a how-to video, understanding noise, diagnose, and repair. Maybe this is for auto mechanics? Okay, we'll, we'll find out. Look at this cool cover. Martial art video, SBTV. 
Thank you, Dave. Um, there's one called Fear. Comes out swinging. What happens to skiers on fire? Oh, there's Nick's excitement uh, corner yeah, right there. Here's another excitement. A skier on here's fire. A, here's an excitement corner entry. Bungee jumping. Doesn't get much more exciting than that. Okay. Hitting mechanics, breaking down the swing. I kind of I like this cover. It kind of <laughs> had its, all the elements there of uh, baseball. I like this one. We and maybe we'll do like a hunting video, like because hunting videos does have good covers. This is called the Duck Men Three. In yo face. <laughs> In your face, and then it says on the bottom, a duckaholic's dream. Uh -huh. Duckaholics, of course, addicted to duckahol. Uh -huh. uh, here's uh, Arnett, My Way. Um, it's it's in a weird shrink wrap that isn't really shrink wrap. It's kind of like a, it's taped here. Uh, it looks like it's an extreme video with uh, motocross and yeah. snowboarding and skateboarding. Wow. Uh, another Nick's Excitement Corner. Yeah. Chen Kuang long fist instruction in this cool yellow case. Look at this cool yellow case. It's nice. This um, one's uh, called wiper systems. Maybe uh, all you got to do is add butt to the front of that, and it becomes butt wiper systems. Okay. So wow, that's a good one. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's late. National Survey of Chinese Martial Arts. Here's what it said. It says Chinese Kung Fu National Survey. Dave, so, thank you for sending this. And by the way, if yeah. you're a VCR look, party, look how much this used to cost. Sixty dollars. It was seven. It was seventy oh, wow. bucks. Seventy bucks. I hope Dave didn't pay that. I don't think he did. But I don't see the Brett Michaels video. I guess he didn't buy it. I guess Dave doesn't really love us. Well, it's the least he can do. Having I think we brought up Dave once before because he's the one who you hired a Jack Nicholson personator. Oh, that's right. Party, yes, right? that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't want a stripper. Yes. So you had a terrible Jack Nicholson impersonator. Yep. Well, there's tons of good stuff in here, and if you find okay. something, send it to us at our addresses here in Gowanus, Brooklyn. Oh, there's, um, this one says it has a pocket schedule inside. Oh, yeah? I want to see if there's a pocket schedule, if it's still... Nope. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. By pocket the way, um, Angela Lansbury's um, uh, exercise video, we find lots of these, and they always say, it comes with a free poster. And I was in North Dakota doing a college show a couple weeks ago, and I found one that still had the poster in it. Yeah, so, we, we have like yeah. four of them. None of them have the poster. Yep, so, so now we have it. And it's nice. not a poster of Angela Lansbury in a bath, which I was hoping. It just is yeah. how to do the exercises. Yeah. But. All right. So cool. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. That was great. Um, hey, I want to thank Mickey Fever, an artist in analog illustration for punk and parodies. He sent us the, these t shirts of Uncle cool. Floyd. Yeah. yeah, it's a cool shirt. Yeah, yeah. thanks for I sending us the shirts. I thought it looked pretty shirts. cool today. Yeah, yeah, we like getting stuff in the um, mail. It's all right, fun. we're going to end on this. We're going to do this for all the month of December uh, leading up to Christmas Day. We're going to show every single video on our outros of the Jingle Cats. And now this, uh, if you haven't seen the Jingle Cats, oh boy, yeah, this is one of the greatest things of all time. This guy, Mike Spala, he's the director behind it. We've talked over email. I think we've talked on the phone a few times. Um, he lives in LA. I mean, he's told us that he's been working on, I think a Jingle Dogs movie. A feature length movie for Jingle he also, Dogs. He also did Jingle Babies, which maybe we'll play that in sure. the coming weeks. Yeah. But uh, we're going to start off at the beginning of this Jingle Cats video as we play our credits. And uh, oh, this, this is a good one. This Let's is get us really... in the holiday spirit. For yeah, the month exactly. Of December, exactly. So. Month of December, counting down the days. Um, we will see you next, next week. week. Goodbye. Goodbye.